Magadi Mose. Hello, everybody. My name is Sekai Chitaukire, and I am born and raised in Harare, Zimbabwe. I have since had the opportunity to live in three different countries and travel to other places as well. I currently work as a secondary school counselor, and this is something that I've been doing for um, about 10 years now although I'm in my current location just for two years. In my job, I work especially with young people. Um, so secondary is roughly from about 12 to 18 years old. And my job, my main purpose is to support them with issues related to their social and emotional well-being, as well as uh, provide some guidance on general life skills, um, you know, how to deal with uh, conflict, how to take care of yourself, prioritizing that self-care that, that's become such a buzzword lately, and um, just how to get along with other people, whether it's friends, teachers, parents. And um, yeah, so my job is interesting in that every day looks different. Sometimes I'm counseling the students, sometimes I'm teaching a lesson, otherwise I am um, collaborating with my colleagues. So. As I mentioned earlier, I have lived and worked in, in many countries outside of Zimbabwe, which is my home. And over the years, I think I've, I've, I've learned different things that make it, um, or that help to make the transitions a little bit easier. Of course, home is always best for most of us, and so any move will come with some challenges. If I had to give a few tips, I would say um, stop preparing for that move even before you're going, you know, as many months before uh, leading up to the move. Communicate with people in your circle. I think I start with that one because the human connection is very important for me. Um, communicate with the people in your circle that need to know that you're moving. Uh, be intentional about how you say bye to them. Maybe it's cooking a special meal or going to that favorite spot that you always like hanging out with that particular person or maybe it's a favorite song. Whatever it is that you like doing um, you know, with those different people, be intentional about doing it. Um, some people might like to write letters and, and put down their feelings and their thoughts on paper, and that's also great. I would also say use this as a time to, to reconcile with um, anyone that you might have some differences with, uh, so that as you move, you are at peace. Uh, whatever that looks like, whether you continue a relationship with someone or you're putting an, an end to the relationship, but just um, don't leave things hanging, right? Um, what else? F you know, things like finding out about where you're going, do as much research as possible, whether it's for university, whether it's for a new job, or if, if it's a family-related move. Just try to find out as much information about the place where you're going, reach out to some people if that's possible, and start to become familiar with that new place, even while you're saying bye to the current place. Also, um, what else? Once you've made the move, so once you're in the new location, um, definitely important to keep ties with people back home or with your previous home and we're lucky now with technology that we have you know whatsapp we have google meets and other platforms that we can use to stay in touch with our family and friends um, but once you're in that new place then start to make the connections for some people that is finding a new church or whatever is your place of religious worship. For some people, it's finding a gym so that you can carry on with that uh, all-important physical workout. For some people, it's finding the best barbecue place in town. So whatever it is, start being intentional about getting familiar with the place, understanding the people. Um, in as much as you're an individual and we celebrate that, it's always important to understand the new place that you're living in, what are the cultures, 
what are the things that guide people in that area so that you don't find yourself um, you know infringing on 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 the local culture one of the things that I like to do is I carry a Zimbabwean flag and once I'm in my new home I put that up and it's always a reminder and a connection to to my home country obviously carrying some of my favorite foods so mazoe, hufu <laughs> um, yeah so take some of those favorites that will help you stay connected to home depending on who you are you might also want to find out if there are other people from your country or from your city living in the new place that you can um, become ac acquainted with and hopefully build um, deeper relationships with over time um, don't forget the lessons that your parents taught you. I think that's the biggest thing because many times, especially for young people, that first move is usually to go to university and your parents are not there with you, aunties and uncles are not there with you. So <clears throat> the best guide that you have is those life lessons that were instilled in you um, as you were growing up. There will be many temptations, there will be many things that you're exposed to, and it's up to you to use what you know to make the decisions of what you get involved in and what you choose to, to, to ignore. Um, tips about maintaining a positive mindset. Um, I think there's a lot of things that come into this and, you know, some of it is taking care of things like your sleep. Are you rested enough? Um, are you getting good quality sleep? It's becoming more and more difficult with those devices. Many of us want to sleep with our phones right next to us, but uh, sleep well, eat well, exercise, you know, go out, connect with nature, connect with people. Um, be intentional about things like saying affirmations or or just starting your day off with intention. Um, you know, so by the end of today, I need to complete this project. I need to meet up with a friend. And when you have um, that purpose, it helps you to, to be able to achieve your goals. It helps you to be able to be successful. And it helps you to be able to navigate the day that's ahead of you. Um, I think also just choosing the spaces that you expose yourself to. So be that in-person friendships, relationships, if somebody's always negative, uh, you may want to step away from that relationship and uh, yeah, not sh necessarily shut them down completely, but just choose when you put yourself into that space. Uh, we need to be careful with social media or just, you know, the news, the internet, lots of um, bad things often get reported in the news and if you're constantly glued to it, that definitely can have a negative impact on your mental health and your positivity levels. Uh, social media, as we all know, there's a lot of, um, you know, people project themselves in a certain way, often we want to look perfect. Uh, we want to make it seem as if our life, everything is, is, is in the right place and everything is going well. Certain body images are presented and so we can feel a lot of pressure from things like this. And it's, it's good to be uh, intentional about which spaces, which groups you expose yourself um, to. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure for young people. Uh, some of it comes from parents, some of it comes from the social media that I've already spoken about, um, you know, to be high achievers, to follow certain certain pathways. When I was growing up and, and in high school, we had very few choices or the expected choices were very limited in the sense of, you know, you were expected to be an accountant or a doctor or a teacher or a lawyer. Um, and there was just so much pressure. I remember choosing psychology and having lots of people question me, like, what is that? Why have you chosen that? What are you going to do with that? Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's important to be your own person, first and foremost, and um, know what you want, which at 18 is kind of hard. Um, 
but just understand what makes you happy. What are you passionate about? Expose yourself, you know, to different things. If you have an opportunity to volunteer in different places, I would say do that because then you're exposed to um, different types of workplaces. You can start to recognize what you like and what you don't like. Um, I don't know how many parents are going to watch this, but I think part of this message goes out to the adults in the lives of, of young people that not everybody is going to be a doctor, not everybody is going to be a lawyer, and that's okay. There's so many different professions uh, nowadays, and the world is ever-changing, and there's lots of innovation going on. Um, so it's okay if your child comes home and, and drops some professional aspirations of, of careers that you've never heard of. Um, it's also okay if your child says, I want to take a gap year, right? Maybe travel if, if, if um, the situation allows or, or ex you know, again, expose yourself to different settings and just see what, um, what those bring to you so that when you do make it to university, uh, you're more inclined to choose something that you like and um, even with the university education I think many of us do think at 18 whether from from family and society pressures or just from our own experiences think we're ready and we know what we want to study but in my experience over the years I'm realizing that lots of people will change um, careers will go back to school and study something totally different from their first degree so that also is okay you know go in and study accounting and then six ten years later decide maybe you want to be a lawyer maybe you want to be a teacher that's okay don't don't feel like you're stuck in that profession because um, that's what you chose first um, I think the last part of, of, of this talk We'll be just focusing a little bit about mental health and well-being. Again, this is the work that I, I focus mostly on. Um, I would encourage the positive and proactive approach. So a lot of those things that I spoke about before, you know, eating well, staying hydrated, connecting with people, connecting with nature, doing the things that you enjoy. These are all things that can help us to have a more healthy uh, frame of mind, which will then hopefully pre prevent some of the mental uh, illnesses that can happen. Of course, there's a biological component to that, and some people are predisposed to things like depression or anxiety, um, but do what you can to, to help prevent those. So, so take care of your mental health and well-being. Um, should you find that you are overly anxious or you're feeling sad and really depressed, then my advice for that would be reach out you know there's nothing wrong with asking for help um, reach out to a professional reach out to somebody in your family and just say hey you know what I want to talk um, something's going on I don't feel okay I don't know what it is and you find that even just in talking you start to release some of that burden that you might be feeling of course if this goes on and on for months, you know, extended periods of time, then the advice there would be to reach out to mental health professionals, you know, that can be a counselor, it can be a psychologist, and have them support you through whatever that you're dealing with. Um, there's also a lot of resources online, you know, Google searches um, will return results of who might be available to support you in the area that you live in. Um, so as I close off, I just want to remind you all again to be kind to yourself, take care of yourself, prioritize yourself um, so that you can be well. And um, when we are well, then we're better able to do the other things that are expected of us or that we want to do in our lives. So whether that is um, be in school, whether that's be a daughter or a son, be a friend, be a partner. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's my closing 
thought is be kind to yourself. Thank you very much to Jen Zim for this opportunity and for the work that you do.